Okay, everybody, this is Emar Soap 2. Welcome to another edition of the original free kick. As a recap, Atlanta United's home win over Cincinnati, which took place on September 15th. We're recording this on September 16th, and we'll go over all things Atlanta United and look at the Eastern Conference standings as well. As always, if you want to follow everything that we do, head to the mothership to sportsinquire.net. Premier Cypher News and Notes in the world of sports. You can also go to our social media platforms on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook under Sports Inquirer. And then finally, you can follow us on or go to our audio and video host, such as YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and iTunes. Do a search on there for us, and you'll be able to keep up with all the things that we have going on. Yeah, as I mentioned earlier, Atlanta United earned a 4-0 home win over Cincinnati on September 15th. A Luis, a Luis Arujo, Arujo and Joseph Martinez and Ezekiel Barco all scored goals in the contest. Alan Franco recorded three assists, which makes him the first player in club history to reach that mark in a single contest. Here is manager Gonzalo Pineda for Atlanta United on the victory. Yeah, I would say that yes, it is uh, It is somehow what I envision. Uh, obviously having many attacking minded players on the field help, but as a coach you have to always think also in the balance and how to control the game. So it's not about putting all the attacking players on the field, it's sometimes putting a good mix of uh, guys that can control the tempo, that can manage the possession, but also that can defend in the few moments that we are exposed on the back. So I think all of that combined is what uh, gave us today the three points. Yeah, Narujo had a big night for Atlanta United and got the goal and got on the lead with the goal in the fifth minute, which probably will be one of the top three or four goals that you'll see this entire season for Atlanta United. Uh, Franco was able to deliver a pass to Arujo in the center circle and he was quickly closed in by three Atlanta defenders, uh, three Cincinnati defenders, including Ronald uh, Matardia, the Cincinnati captain. He was able to get past those three defenders, pat, pat, move it to his left side and go right towards the net. And he was able to, when he got to the right side of the penalty area, he proceeded to hit a left footed shot into the far side of the net past Cincinnati goalkeeper uh, Triton for the goal. It was his first career goal for Atlanta United. The Brazilian, the new designated player for Atlanta, has really found his footing over the past few matches and was able to get that first goal. Here he is on that goal and uh, what it meant to him and for the team. I'm very happy to score my first goal with his shirt. Estava uh, trabalhando muito forte nos quatro primeiros jogos. A bola passava muito perto, batia na trave e não entrava. I was work I was working very hard to get this first goal in the first four four games. I, I came very close to scoring, but it wouldn't go in. É, mas continuei trabalhando, focado, sabia que eu moro entrar e, e hoje estou muito feliz de, de ter marcado meu primeiro gol e, e a equipe sa ter saído vitoriosa. I was uh, working very hard and I knew it would come and I'm very happy it came in today. And I'm um, very happy with the win. <laughs> na hora a gente não, na hora não vejo muito. No, uh, no, I didn't see them. Pero a gente vive tanto esse momento que, que é uma coisa automática. It's like an automatic thing to me to just go. Procurei usar a minha normal característica, a minha velocidade, e deu certo. That's one of my characteristics, the speed and, and the dribble, and I just went for it. And here is manager Pineda on that goal. It just the big contributions that Arujo was Arujo Joe has been able to make to the team this year. It was it was amazing. It was amazing because it's something that we prepared. Uh, we talk uh, about uh, Brooks Lennon being a little bit deeper, creating those spaces for Luis Araujo when their wing back jumps on him, and uh, and he was isolated in that little pocket, and that's where he can show what he can bring to the team, which is explosive player that can go on the dribble and obviously coming inside to take shots. But also, I think he can pass the ball in behind at times. He did a couple of times. And I think he's a very dangerous player that is going to score many goals for this franchise. And then right before halftime, Atlanta was able to double up their lead in the 40th minute. From a set piece about 40 yards from go, Arujo was locked to the ball into the penalty box area to the right side for Franco. He was able to one time the pass on his right foot to the other side of the penalty area to Joseph Martinez. He was able to hit the goal and put it into the net 
for Atlanta. It was Franco's second of three assists in the contest. Here is Pineda on Franco's night. We're very happy for Alan Franco. Uh, I don't remember anything like that, uh, but but very happy for him. Obviously, I mean, having three assists in the game, um, you know, is, is something important for the team. But the most important part about, about my center backs is how they defend with a lot, of, a lot of space in their backs. And that, for me, was the best part of Alan Franco, how he deals with 1v1 situations and he just regains the ball with the right angle, the right tackle, the right anticipation, and he leads the other two. And that's the type of center back that I want for the team, someone with leadership, with a lot of spirit, with a lot of uh, uh, experience, and can hold uh, in that position as, as he did. And Atlanta continued the offensive onslaught right into the second half in the 55th minute. Franco intercepted a, intercepted a pass, immediately passed the ball to Barco. Ezekiel was able to dribble the ball through the midfield and sent a through ball to Martinez on the left side. Joseph was, took the ball, made a few touches on it, and was able to freeze the defender and Triton, the Cincinnati goalkeeper, and chip a pass on the with his right foot into the far corner of the net for the goal. So that made the score three to nothing for Atlanta. And that was Joseph's eighth goal of the season for Atlanta. And here is Pineda on the midfield play and the big contributions they made to the victory. Because center meets are very important, are pivotal for what I just said. The the manager the management of the tempo and how to control the game. I felt that Rosero was very good. The instructions for Rosero was, yes, help us in the build-up, but after that, stay and hold the middle. Just like Sosa does all the time, now you are the one is doing that. And then Marcelino, a little bit more freedom to inter interchange positions with Barco, with Joseph in between the lines, but then defensively, he was also recovering uh, as a double pivot. So, uh, Kudos to those two because they did a fantastic job. I felt that when we made the subs with Mo and Tyler Wolf in those positions, they did the same. I love Mo's intensity when he's in the in the one v one challenges. He wins those duels and then he's able to play forward. Tyler Wolf, you just saw the fantastic play he did when he turned and faced forward and he's passing the ball. And Tyler, I think, uh, is one of those players that surprised me. Uh, when I just first arrived because he's uh, a young, talented player that can turn into a very good and important player for this franchise if he wants to. And Martinez, that's a, so he scored two goals in the contest, and that was a, a big thing for him because that was his 85th goal in 100 MLS appearances, which is the most ever in fran not only in franchise history, but in the history of Major League Soccer. Uh, so that was a, a big goal for him to get that into the net. And Atlanta Pop finished this contest uh, with a goal in the 86th minute with a free kick goal from Barco. It was a sixth goal of the year. And actually, let's play Pineda on Martinez reaching that milestone before we get to that free kick. Well, not just a couple, but 98 across all the competitions. Uh, we're very happy for Joseph's numbers, but I'm very happy for the heart that he puts on the field. Uh, he's a team guy. He's a guy that uh, is crazy for winning titles with this franchise. And that's what I love from the leaders of this team, whether it's Brad, whether it's Joseph. They all want to succeed with this club because they love the club. And Joseph, having 100 games with this uh, club in MLS, is just another remarkable stat for his amazing career in MLS. And I'm very happy for him. He's been fantastic since I am here. And I think the best for Joseph is just coming. So as I said, Barco hit the right-footed shot that curled into the far post. It was the first direct kick free goal, direct free kick goal for Atlanta since Kevin Kras versus Montreal in 2018. One big difference we've seen from Atlanta in compared with the new management, first under interim manager Rob Valentino and now the Gonzalo Pineda, has been the usage of set pieces. And here is Pineda on converting those set pieces into not only goal scoring opportunities, but actually getting the ball behind, back in the net and scoring those goals. 
I don't spend any time on that, it's my assistants. Uh, my assistants are the ones uh, spend a lot of time. I, tr as, as a coach, I try to give autonomy to my assistants. So I don't, I'm not, I don't get involved in those uh, set pieces. Obviously I have my opinions and some ideas, but it's them who plan the different uh, plays that we can do in set pieces. And they are the ones that train with the team uh, on the field so you can see a little bit of that. I think it's also the performance of the players, how they identify certain plays that we didn't even train, but because we are giving them options, I think they are able to find those opportunities to score in set pieces. And if you look at the statistics, Atlanta outshot Cincinnati 15 to 11, led on shots on target nine to three, the corner kicks, Atlanta led that four to three, Fouls committed. Cincinnati committed 18 fouls in comparison to only 15 for uh, for Atlanta. So Atlanta had the ball as usual, possessed the ball. 61% percentage possession percentage for Atlanta in the contest. And that caused Cincinnati to commit a lot of fouls. And their passing accuracy, Atlanta led in that 89% compared to 86% for Cincinnati. With that victory... Atlanta is above the playoff line for the first time in several months. They currently sit seventh in the Eastern Conference with 33 points. They're only two points out of fourth place, and they host D.C. United on September 18th. We will be at practice tomorrow and have a preview of that D.C. United contest in the very near future. So be on the lookout for that. And that's going to conclude this edition of the original free kick. As always, if you want to follow everything that we do, Head to the mothership to sportsinquire.net for all those news and notes in the world of sports. You can also transition to our social media platforms on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook under the Sports Inquirer. And finally, go to our audio and video host, such as SoundCloud, YouTube, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and iTunes. Do searches on there. Follow us under Sports Inquirer. Until next time, good fight, good night, and be safe.